Hi, it's Remy and welcome to this week's video. So in this video, I'm going to share with you how to capture faraway subjects. When I started doing photography, I was always struggling with faraway subjects. They were either too far away, they looked too small, or they were like kind of something was missing in the photograph, like the foreground was not adequate, something was always missing. And then I was always feeling frustrated because I remember that the scene was amazing and then I needed to work a lot in order to figure out how to take these photographs properly. And so here I am in the Lofoten Islands still. If you saw my other previous videos, you probably noticed that I spent some time here now. And I have like those beautiful mountains in front of me and they are like quite far away. You can probably see it now behind me that they look very small. And the goal here is to capture those uh, mountains and to make them look as good as possible and not too small, not too big, and to look just perfect in the photographs. So let's go on this journey together and let's enjoy a nice sunset. First, the gear that you need in order to take those kind of photographs is rather simple. I am using here my mid focal range lens, which is an Fujifilm XF 18 to 55 millimeters. That's equivalent to about 24 to 70 millimeters on full frame. So that's usually a kit lens. For me, that's a kit lens. That's the one I had with the with the, my camera when I bought it. It's um. It's a lens that I don't really use very frequently, to be frank, but each time I need it, I am so happy to have it. And as you can see here, it's very small, it's lightweight, so I can carry it with me without really caring. And usually this is the case for this type of kit lenses that are not too big, easy to carry around, so you can use them very easily. And in this case, we are using this in order to photograph those faraway mountains here. Using a too wide angle lens like my XF 10 to 24 millimeters or an equivalent in full frame of 15 millimeters to 30 millimeters is that your mountain will appear very, very small. I love full frames and usually that's what I'm using when I'm photographing mountains, but in, in these situations, that's the lens I want to avoid because I just don't want to mess up with my uh, with my photographs and having those mountains look like very small and kind of not being able to transfer the feeling I had when I was on the scene because in the end that's what photography is all about like to transfer your feelings to someone else who is watching your picture and so in this case here I am now shooting so at 80 mm, 18 millimeters which is like rather wide, but I do have a very nice foreground with some um, yellow grass that uh, contrast on the white snow. And I do have those nice stones there, like close to the, close to the water between the snow and the sea. And then we have a large area of water until the, um, the mountains that are on the background. And shooting like this, I'm like, first of all, introducing some contrast. So when the viewer is looking at the photograph, he will see the contrast on the colors and then lead towards the mountains that are on the background. And because I'm using my camera at 18 millimeters, the mountains over there don't appear too small. The foreground don't, uh, is well proportionate to the rest of the, uh, of the photograph. So let me show you some few pictures now. I finally got closer to the water because I could see those black stones here that have like very interesting shapes. So if you look here at the, um, 
a recording I did with the, the other camera where I'm recording what I am shooting now. It's really amazing. So we really see those lines here that are like leading the look of someone, of the viewer, into the photograph, into those mountains that are in the background. And since I am using now my 18 to 55 millimeters, which is at about 20 millimeters more or less here, I can capture the, um, those nice shapes here and really use them as leading lines over there. And the tricky thing here is that it's really tempting, but really tempting to use uh, the, the ultra wide angle lens because those shapes would really, I guess, look really amazing with it. The problem is that the mountains on the background would look like pretty much nothing. So it would be really a shame to just like lose a little bit of the image because of this. Of course, there is always the possibility for some people just to make those mountains bigger in, uh, once you're doing some post-processing. But this is not my idea. I don't really like to modify my pictures in that way. I like to post-process post -process them in a certain way. That is uh, my, uh, my, uh, my own way of doing. And like really moving the objects in the picture to make them like look as if they were different from the reality. It looks nice, but that's not really my philosophy here. I'd rather try to make the photograph on site as I want it to be final and then do the post-processing on it as opposed to modify it too much so that it distorts too much the reality. And in this case, using the uh, like a mid focal range lens is really what you need. I am now shooting in landscape orientation and the idea here that I wanted to do is to get basically a little bit of the foreground here and the mountain on the background. So I'm shooting at the wider um, focal length here which is 18 millimeters on this lens and for APS-C just to remember <laughs> and um, basically the line here and the other one are kind of converging together towards the sky which is over there with the beautiful sky which is over there and with the combination of colors of uh, converging lines and so on that really creates depth into the photograph which i truly enjoy doing so you can see it here on the on the small video i took with the, with this camera and that's just fantastic and the colors right now are just so peaceful it goes all together there is like a little bit of black here the blue mixed with uh, some of the pink from the sky the sky which is gray orange pink a little bit of everything and the snowy mountain on the background i could not ask for better conditions than that it's just so relaxing yeah i guess that's what photography is all about just relaxation although sometimes it's stressful so I just moved back a little bit from where I was before and uh, I was like right in front just before and I put myself into um, portrait orientation because I thought like those small stones again on the foreground would be really nice and the water splashing once again like some little bit of waves are like creating a little bit of movement into, into the calm and that's, that's just like wonderful that creates like amazing pictures. Like, something rather unusual that I'm doing. I really shoot all an evening with only uh, this uh, XF to 18 to 55 millimeters lens but well today it seems like this is what I had to do because of course I could have used my uh, telephoto lens but I feel that it would have been like kind of a, a bit a bit of a boring photograph and on top of that there is like right in front of me the island which is a little bit hiding the other mountains so even with the telephoto lens would not have been perfect. So using the middle focal range here was, was just the perfect choice. And that's where your photography game rise. It's when you don't really need to think so much about what gear you need to use in each and every situation. And this comes with practice, with of course watching 
my videos because I hope they help you into figuring out a little bit better what you can do in each and every situation. And yeah, that's pretty much the mix you need. Practice and learn. And uh, of course, make mistakes by yourself because that's the best way to learn. That's how I learned a lot. And um, I wish, to be frank, that I watched uh, more videos about photography so that I would have made less mistakes and move further a bit, uh, a bit faster. But well, I guess this is how it is. And uh, now I am where I am and still enjoying doing photography. So that's the most important thing. Oh my god, I just realized that I made a big mistake. I was so focused into looking at the mountains with a nice light that I totally forgot to look on the back of where I am. And so this is the direction the camera is pointing out now. This is the opposite side of where I was before. And it's just wonderful here. Like you basically have a the stones with the, that are making the separation with the water making like an arch here that goes towards all the mountains over there and that's just wonderful and i miss this like how could i miss this that's just unacceptable <laughs> anyways now i have it it's blue hours so the light is a little uh, it's a little bit less entertaining let's say but they still make like a very peaceful and and nice photograph so how could I do that? You see, you learned a lesson today. Look on one side, but always look back. Always look back when you're photographing and you will see. It's not the first time it happened to me. So yeah, should be more cautious about that. Should know it. Anyways, it's still beautiful. Some few lights here and there from the houses. So yeah, fairly happy with the composition. It was a really fun shoot today. I really had a, a lot of fun using uh, this lens that I don't use very often and uh, that helps me work a little bit out with it. And uh, like, I really need to force myself to do something nice with this lens because it's not the one I usually use. So I really need to work out a lot when I use it. And I guess the few results I got were really nice. And uh, now I'm gonna get back to uh, the motorhome and uh, we can look at the pictures together. All right, see ya there. I'm finally back in my motorhome and I can't state enough how good this evening was. I really had a lot of fun photographing, enjoying the colors and, and the calm of the place. It was like really great. And I also thought it would be interesting to share with you some photographs and to speak a little bit more about them so that you can understand a little better about the middle focal range impact in a photograph. So I chose two photographs that I'm gonna walk you through right now. Let's get into the computer. So the first photograph that I chose is this, this one. This is a photograph that I took in the beginning of the evening. And I first of all like the colors in this picture. It's like kind of pastel colors with a little bit of stronger and harsh light on the mountain on the background because the, the light, the sunlight was coming from the left hand side here. And the foreground is a little bit darker because the... Um, it was more on the shadow because of the mountain that was on the back of me. Then now in terms of composition, I really like the fact that we do have leading lines going here all the way and continuing here towards our anchor point, which is the light. And as you might know, light in a photography is really important because this is what drives your viewer's eyes. We do have another element acting here which are the mountains that are going also towards the anchor point while being in the small diagonal here. 
and of course a background subject. And we do have a third element acting as such here, which is the water in blue here that goes towards this element too. It's a little less obvious, but it also acts as such given the blue and the combination of colors we have here with sunlight colors. And I wanted to bring your attention a little more as well on these tones on the foreground. Because this is really the first element that brings the viewer into the picture. And I like the fact that it's not totally distorted as if I would have used a uh, ultra wide angle lens. It's still well proportionate. And the fact that it's the first element that drives into into the picture is amazing because the pitch, the stone is really imposing and then there is the second element the fact that there are like small lines all over this stone that are like really acting as emphasizers for the rest of the um, of the leading lines and to me that really adds up a little bit into the whole photograph so i really like this composition in general this picture, all the colors, the proportions, the mountain could have been a little bit bigger, but I think it's still acceptable, the size they have now, and they were still like a few kilometers away. So, in general, I find this picture rather well balanced. Now, the second photograph I chose is that one, and I didn't realize that I had this picture when I took them. I didn't verify them on site. We overall have the same scene and kind of a little bit of similar composition but of course we are first of all in landscape orientation here. So we do have those stones here that act as leading lines into the picture and towards our background subject that are the mountains here. We do have a beautiful diagonal here that goes towards our anchor point which of course is still the sunlight coming from the left hand side and the mountains still acting as a little diag diagonal here that goes as well towards the light and obviously the water. So we do have something similar in terms of composition like the elements are going all in the same way just that everything is placed a little bit differently and that makes it still beautiful. Now there is one element I wanted to bring your attention to. These are those stones here. So those stones, all the other pictures I had were covered with water. And this is the only picture I have where the stones are visible. And they are very well placed in my opinion. And they really add to the overall balance of the picture. Because we do have here all this negative space, which is normally kind of an empty space that still adds up and is necessary in certain pictures and here we do have it and we do have those small stones that are like a little bit minimalist in the whole picture and i think without them the picture will still look good but not as great as it does right now and of course the last element here is really the combination of those pastel colors like the blue the pink like maybe a little bit of orange as well is like everything an altogether picture that's really amazing and really peaceful. And I think this picture really represents very well what the evening was all about. All right, we are reaching the end of this video. I just wanted to add before concluding this video that use your middle focal range when you are in a situation where like they are beautiful subject on the background, still beautiful foreground, everything is a little bit far away and would look a little bit too small with a wide angle lens and maybe too close with a telephoto lens, then go for your middle focal range and try to make everything into place so that everything remains balanced. It is really important. So I hope that you truly enjoyed this video and that you had a lot of fun watching it, that you learned something once again if you like this video please feel free to let me a thumbs up and if you like in general the photography tips i'm giving you and you want to follow a bit more about my adventures here in norway and other places in the future then click on the subscribe button below that will be amazing and with that i wish you good luck with your photography 
and see you next week for new adventures. <laughs>